We continue our study of the church of Sardis in Revelation chapter 3. Now, last time we learned that Sardis was unflattering referred to as the mannequin church or the museum church because even though it looked like it had something on the outside it was inwardly dead and empty jesus calls out the church at sardis for their outward profession but he tells them inwardly they are dead these things says he who has the seven spirits of god and the seven stars i know your works that you have a name that you are alive but you are dead. That word dead is the same word that Jesus uses, the Bible uses in other parts of the New Testament. For example, it says that the wages of sin is death. That is thanatos in the Greek. That means that you don't just die and go to a, an eternal soul sleep or a grave sleep. That means you die and you're separated from God forever. And Jesus tells the church of Sardis, you think you're alive, but you are dead. You are spiritually dead. You are going to be judged forever and ever. Because even though you have an outward profession, inwardly you are empty. You are nothing resembling that of a Christian church. Now, expeditions from Harvard and Cornell archaeologists for more than 40 years keep going back to the city of Sardis and they wanted to see if all the stories all the legends about Sardis being a wealthy city of filled with gold and silver was true and after all these expeditions and archaeological digs they did indeed discover that Sardis was one of the earliest civilizations to have all kinds of gold and lots of it they also discovered that Sardis did indeed sit on top of a 1500 mountain a 1500 foot mountain above sea level called Mount Timolus. And Sardis was so arrogant, they thought that their gold, their silver, they thought the fact they were high up on that mountain, they were impenetrable. They believed that no outside forces could touch them. And out of Sardis came an old saying that has been popular in the world for centuries, as rich as Crasis. And this is King Crasis of Sardis. And what's so sad about Sardis and all the things that he did, he believed his wealth and his fortress kept him from being untouchable. He believed he was invincible. So arrogant and might I say so stupid was King Croesus that he attacked one of the most powerful military forces in the world. He launched a military invasion on King Cyrus of Persia. Sardis and Croesus were beaten so badly that they retreated back into their mountainous fort. But Persia and Cyrus and they didn't leave there. They stayed and they laid siege to this fortress and they waited and they waited and they waited till they got their big break to breach this mountain. And here's how they did it. A soldier from inside Sardis dropped his helmet and it went down a jagged rock path that was only known to those inside the fortress at Sardis. And this Persian soldier went back and reported to his superiors what he saw. The next day, Cyrus called for an invasion of Sardis and they killed the people inside Sardis and they took their gold and they took whatever they wanted. And you know, we learned a lot of great lessons from Sardis because they thought their gold and their silver and their protection made them invincible. Well, I want to tell you, here's some lessons we learned from Sardis tonight and from arrogance. Number one, all the gold, all the silver, all the prestige, all the political power in the world does not exempt us from the judgment of God. Hebrews 9.27 says it is appointed unto man once to die and after that death comes the judgment of God. Secondly, we learn that our soul is the great breach. Our soul is breached by sin and the only cure for sin is Jesus Christ. You know, there's a story in the New Testament where a rich young ruler goes to Jesus and says, what must I do to have eternal life. And Jesus tells them, go and sell everything that you have and give it to the poor. And this rich young ruler goes away very sadly. And there's another story of a man, a farmer who builds these barns and he has all these, uh, this material inside his barns. And he says, I've got to build bigger barns and I've got to do this and I've got to do that. And you know, what's really sad is this man says, I will eat drink and be merry and I will say to my soul take ease for I've accomplished everything Jesus said this night you fool your soul will be required of you and these are lessons we learn from Sardis because no matter how much money you have no matter how much power you have you need to realize something you will stand before a holy God and your political parties won't save you your money won't save you your accomplishments on earth won't save you I was a sports writer for 10 years and I remember reading the story of an athlete named Ron a five-star recruit back in the day recruited by all the major colleges 
And Ron was such a blessed, gifted athlete, but he partied hard. And he now sits in a wheelchair, and he has been since he was 23 years old with feeding tubes in him. And all he can do to communicate is to write. And he says, I never thought it would happen to me. And that's what Sardis said. They never thought it would happen to them because of their gold and their fortress and their wealth. Well, I want to tell you, it does happen. There will be a day before you stand before a holy God. And nothing's going to save you except the blood of Jesus Christ, except a genuine, authentic relationship with Him. I've met a lot of pastors who said, I never thought I'd leave my wife for another woman. I never thought I'd steal money from the church. And those pastors did. Stay humble. Stay teachable. Be open to a relationship to Jesus Christ when you follow Him and commit to Him every day. Because you will be breached one way or another without Jesus Christ by the judgment of a holy God.